Hi, in this video, I'll talk about five things that help me code better. And they're not some new frameworks or apps, but ordinary, physical items that actually make my work more comfortable. I use them all the time, and every interaction with them brings me joy. Today, I won't be talking about obvious things like a big desk, a comfortable chair, or multiple monitors. I'm sure you already know about those. Instead, I'll focus on less obvious things that can change your life just as much. And the first underrated thing that many people overlook is the keyboard. In my case, it's specifically a mechanical keyboard. Right now, I actively use two. The first is the Nuffy Air 75, and the second is the Keychron K8. Both are wireless. The first one has a low profile, while the second is a regular one. I haven't decided yet which one I like more, so I use both. My focus on choosing the right keyboard is not accidental. Just think about it. If you're a programmer or even just somehow connected to IT, you press keys thousands of times a day. You could say the keyboard is what you spend most of your life with. That's why a good keyboard is not a luxury, but a necessity. Comfortable key travel, proper layout, all this helps me type faster, with fewer mistakes, and without pain in my hands. On top of that, every keystroke is a pleasure. I strongly recommend you try and use mechanical keyboards. Compared to regular ones, the difference is like night and day. And one more thing I really enjoy is the sound of such a keyboard. Just listen. This sound immediately puts me in a working mood and makes me want to keep typing and typing. So if you're still using a regular $10 to $20 keyboard or just your laptop keyboard, my advice is go out today and buy or order yourself a mechanical keyboard. It's an investment you definitely won't regret. Plus, these days they're quite affordable and the choice is huge. The second item I'd like to talk about is the mouse. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those developers who do everything from the keyboard, rarely leave the console, and barely touch the mouse. Of course, I often use Vim and Emacs, but outside of them, the mouse is my constant companion. For the past four years, I've been using the Logitech MX Master 3. It's one of the most well-known models, and a lot of people use it. There's already a newer version of this model, the S, but for now, the older one suits me perfectly. I'll switch to the new one when this one breaks. This mouse is fairly large and has an ergonomic shape that fits the natural curve of my relaxed hand. Because of that, my hand stays relaxed while using it and hardly ever gets tired. Before that, I used Apple's mouse. It's quite good. Its strong point, apart through the design, is the touch surface that supports various Mac OS gestures. However, it's small and my hand would get tired quickly when working with it. The third thing I want to talk about is a small, light laptop. And just to be clear, I don't mean your main work computer. Your main device should be powerful and comfortable for desk work. It could be a desktop PC or a big laptop connected to external monitors. The small laptop is more like a second device. It should be light and compact, easy to carry if you get tired of sitting at your desk. You can use it to do light work in another place, move to the sofa, go outside for some fresh air, sit in a cafe, or relax in a comfortable chair in nature. The key thing is you can still stay connected to your work. Look at GitHub, read code, think about ideas, all without rushing. For this, I use a MacBook Air 13-inch. It's very light, almost like a tablet, but still a full laptop with a keyboard. You can install everything you need, even Xcode. The hardware can handle almost anything except the heaviest tasks. The battery lasts a long time, easily a full work day. In my use, working for an hour or an hour and a half at a time, it can last several days, sometimes even a week. I usually charge it every day, but knowing I don't have to worry about running out of battery is very convenient. The next thing I want to talk about is a paper notebook and a pen. It might sound a bit strange these days, because everyone uses digital notebooks. Popular apps like Notion, Apple Notes, Obsidian, and many others. They stink across devices, have integrations, and so on. But I've noticed that for me, the best tool for thinking is a simple paper notebook. You can take it with you, sit down calmly, write something, make notes, draw, just think slowly. The most important thing for me is that what's written or drawn in a paper notebook feels real. Ideas start to leave your head and take their first step into the real world. 
That tactile feeling of writing by hand really works for me. Of course, I also use digital notebooks like Obsidian or Apple Notes. But for slow thinking, sketching ideas, or just jotting things down, a paper notebook is indispensable. Lately, I've been using small Moleskine notebooks. I use a fountain pen because the combination of paper and ink is amazing for me. It connects my ideas with the physical world. I also have a few other notebooks, one big with blank pages, another one in a grid for practical notes. But my main notebook is the small Moleskines. They're thin, light, and easy to carry anywhere. Of course, which notebook and pen you use is up to you. Everyone chooses what they like best. The last thing I want to talk about today is a device for reading. Either a Kindle or an iPad works well. I use both, but really, just one is enough. Why have a separate reading device? If you want to read a lot, you probably won't buy many physical books, maybe just one or two high-quality ones. Most technical books and reference materials are usually in digital form. Reading long books on a phone or computer is very uncomfortable. You can use them to quickly check something, but reading a full book is much better on a dedicated device. A Kindle is great because it feels very close to a paper book. The screen looks like a white page even in sunlight, which makes reading very natural. The downside is that you can only read books on it. An iPad can do more, you can read books and do other tasks, but the screen is not ideal for long reading sessions. I personally prefer reading on a Kindle because I get less distracted. On an iPad, there are messengers and emails and other apps that can interrupt you. With a Kindle, I can just focus on reading. So, those were the five things I use every day that make my work much easier. The main criteria I use to choose them weren't that I couldn't live without them, but that they are very convenient, I use them constantly, and they make my work in life easier. Every time I use them, I genuinely enjoy it. Of course, everyone's list of essential items is different, and some of these might not work for you. You may have other things you prefer. But I hope that at least a few of the items I shared today will be useful for you, too, and that you'll enjoy using them. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See you soon. Take care.